to a new episode of Six Degrees with Kylo Ren. This is Michelle, and I'm going to be flying solo for this podcast, at least this podcast episode. And this week, we're going to focus on discussing the fairly recent costume leak of reference and concept photos and of the wrap photo that was posted by J.J. Abrams that showed Ray, Finn, and Poe hugging. So to start off, to give a little bit of context in case for some reason you haven't seen it, uh, there was a leaked bit of reference and concept art that was posted on Reddit. Uh, the pictures were submitted to the Reddit mod Jedi Paxis and included uh, concepts and re reference photos for a bunch of the characters for Episode 9. What's interesting about these photos is that they corroborate some earlier costume leaks from making Star Wars. So we're going to start by just going through them and talking about kind of our perceptions of them and what they might mean for episode nine. So to start off is A, which is a described as a concept art for a new alien. And he just looks like a cute little guy, doesn't seem particularly ominous. Um, we don't really know anything about him, kind of seems like the generic helper alien we might see in a Star Wars movie. B is the described as the new droid that will annoy BB-8. It is a reference photo of a model, um, which means it's a bit further along. Concept art can change. Reference photos are pretty close to the final thing. Making Star Wars described this droid as being a sidekick to BB-8. And to, uh, to paraphrase what the Knights of Rant said in their podcast, he, he looks like a hairdryer on a unicycle. So it, it kind of seems like he's a comic relief droid. We'll, we'll see if he has any significant part or if he's going to be kind of like BB-9E, where there's a lot of marketing and merch for him, and he's only on screen for a few minutes. Moving on, letter C is Richard E. Grant as a First Order officer. I think this comes as a surprise to no one that Richard E. Grant would be playing a First Order officer. Um, he's British. We all know that the British guys are bad in, in the Star Wars universe <laughs> with, the, with the accent. And the interesting thing to me with him is that he's the right age to be playing a survival Imperial officer. If you read the Aftermath trilogy at all, you would know that the surviving remnants of the Imperials fled to the unknown regions after the Battle of Jakku. So when we're thinking of, of characters from the sequel trilogy like Captain Kennedy or uh, Peavy, they seem like they came from the old school Imperials, whereas then we've got the young upstarts like Hux and, and Kylo who came in, you know, who were too young or, or you know, possibly not even born yet to remember the, the original Imperial versus Rebellion War. Moving on to D, uh, we have concept art of a resistance soldier. Uh, his photo, to me, his costume looks like he it was inspired by what we saw on the Tanja of Four um, or the guy in the tower on Yavin. And he also matches the previous description that Making Star Wars gave of resistance fighters. There was a leak from Making Star Wars that described that the resistance fighters were all decked out in green army fatigues. One source noted it was very similar to the Endor Rebel soldier kit. However, the main difference at a glance is that the helmet is different. The helmets were the shape of large shallow walks. One source said they were like Constable Zuvio's hel helmet, but camouflaged. The Making Star Wars description first broke. Some of us at six degrees immediately thought of the shots in the Force Back and the Force Awakens of Kylo stabbing someone in a walk-shaped helmet, apparently to save Rey. Uh, we call this character Salad Bowl as a nickname. What's interesting to me is that if this is a sign that the Force Back from Force Awakens is going to reemerge, then it's insinuating that this this bit where Kylo saves Rey is actually from the future that she saw in her vision. And if Kylo is saving, is killing a resistance soldier to save Rey, that op opens up all kinds of interesting plot ideas. Is Rey considered a traitor at this point when this happens? You know, maybe Poe finds out about the Force Bond and she gets kicked out or she's branded, branded as a trailer. Um, so we're going to put up an image of, of the character that we call Salad Bowl. And I don't really think that it's the same uniform that we're seeing in Photo D. The person getting stabbed has a staff as a weapon, and it looks like they're wearing an armored vest. The resistance soldier has a vest, but it doesn't appear to be armored in any way. So I think it was an interesting theory that we had based on that verbal description from making Star Wars, but it's probably unlikely. Um, one other interesting thing about the Salad Bowl character from the Force Back is that he is listed as a Knight of Ren in the credits for The Force Awakens, but Pablo Hidalgo, who is in the story group, corrected that with people on Twitter and said that he's actually a clan leader, that the shooting script described him as a clan leader. 
um, as opposed to being a, a knight of Ren. And what I think is interesting with that, if it was going to tie into the resistance, is the resistance is supposedly gathering allies from various tribes and clans and pirate groups and whatnot um, early on in episode nine. So that was another reason we thought that this might be plausible. Moving on to E, we have Dominic Monaghan, otherwise known as Charlie from Lost, otherwise known as a hobbit, um, as a resistance officer. And there's nothing really unexpected here. We all figured he'd be a resistance member. Anybody who followed him on social media knew that he was filming roughly around the same times as some of the other resistance cast members. F is described as concept art for a new alien. We were wondering, could this be Salad Bowl? This alien does have a staff, and the clothing looks much more clan-like than the resistance officer. This character does have a mask in this photo, but maybe the mask comes off at some point, or maybe it's stylized like Kylo's mask in the Force back, because if you'll recall, when Rey sees him in the snowy forest in the Force back, Kylo was wearing a mask. However, when they do fight in the snowy forest on St Starkiller Base, he is not. Letter G is a reference photo for a young Mon Cal. Um, not a whole lot to say on this. It looks like a young Radis or Admiral Akbar. H is Ray, and she's in a white costume. We had first heard that Ray's outfit was eggshell color and that her hair was up from the guy on Reddit who leaked some Jordan photos. He didn't have a photo of Ray in costume, but said that he had seen her um, and that there were projectiles, there was explosions and things like that, and had described her outfit as being eggshell colored or light colored. Uh, the thing that jumped out at me right away about this costume is that it looks like it has a strong Padme influence. It's, it's the same color as Padme's Attack of the Clone outfit, and she's wearing the white or cream-colored leggings tucked into tan boots. Um, it, it's not the most exciting outfit, but what I like is that it's, it's very feminine, I think, and it's form-fitting. It shows off Daisy's figure a lot better than some of these looser, drapier outfits that she's worn. Um, the, the cream color can almost give a hint of it maybe being something bridal, and when she's put next to Kylo, who's back in a Force Awakens-ish dark black outfit, to me it emphasizes light and dark and yin and yang. Um, she, Rey is wearing the same belt that she's had in all three movies in this, but she also has a arm cuff on her right upper arm, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in a little bit. Moving on, photos I and J are of Kylo, and you can see that he has the mask back here. Looks like it's a combination of his Force Awakens and Last Jedi looks because uh, he's got some kind of a hood cowl thing back. I don't know if it's the same one from Force Awakens. And this confirms the long-rumored reforged mask that uses some sort of red bonding material. Um, this is probably a regression for him, or he's hiding his face. Now, granted, this is all probably just for merch, so they can merchandise Kylo and the mask and sell more Kylo toys with the new red bonded mask. But we'll see how long he actually wears the mask, given that he only wore it in one scene in The Last Jedi. I don't have a whole lot more to say about that at this point. Letter K is Adventure Poe, a refer reference photo of Adventure Poe. Um, and this Poe looks like something out of the Indiana Jones movie or a Tomb Raider game. I saw a preview of this costume in the photos that were leaked to The Sun, the British publication. So this isn't a huge surprise. Letter L is a new alien mask. It's listed as being an unfinished mask. It's interesting looking, but without context, we really don't have a whole lot to say about it. Letter M is a reference photo for a horned pilot. Wondering if this could be some sort of pirate pilot. Um, there are rumors of pirates allying with the resistance. He certainly doesn't look like he's first order by any means, and it looks like a friendlier alien, so I guess we'll see. And then moving on to N, which to me is one of the most interesting photos on here. This is concept art for a new alien, and frankly, I think it's creepy as heck looking. I mean, it looks like it's something out of a horror movie, not Star Wars. We've heard rumors from making Star Wars that there is some sort of a threat from the beyond that is going to make itself known in Episode Nine, and I wonder if this guy is related to that threat in some way. And Red Th Thrawn alliances. You'll remember that there was a threat coming in from the unknown regions called the Grists, and this is a species with wide shoulders, angled brow ridges, and a tapered skull, and sunken eyes. Now this. Alien has some of those traits. The, the eyes are particularly creepy, but I don't know that it matches those descriptions entirely. Uh, but whatever it is, unless it's just some background dude in a cantina, uh, this, this guy is not good. Anyways, it's not how I picture the Grisk, but it's creepy and I think he's bad news. Oh. Another fun photo here is O, which is a reference photo for old Lando. Lando! 
I, you know, I love that he's wearing basically the same costume here that Donald Glover wore in Solo. Uh, he's got the yellow shirt and the cape. And I'm hoping that this is a way to visually tie things to Solo because I think if we do get those ties to Solos, it's going to mean very good things for the possibility of Ben Solo's redemption. Uh, finally, wrapping this up, um, letter P is described as new alien costumes. We saw cardboard cutouts of these guys for the, from the leaked Jordan photos, and they look like they're dressed up for something fancy. Um, there were rumors that there's some sort of a festival that takes place on the, the desert planet that Jordan represents, so I'm going to guess that maybe these guys are attendees. My, my secret hope of my headcanon is this means that we get to see Ray all dressed up in some sort of a pretty dress at some point, because, you know, Daisy's gorgeous, and, you know, it's one of my favorite headcanons, uh, tropes in, in fan fiction, to have... Ray go to a ball and get all dressed up in, in something beautiful. Finally, letter Q is a spiky-headed dude. Um, he's just some kind of a background alien, it looks like. The, the costume doesn't look very functional, or the puppet doesn't look very functional, so I'm going to guess that this is a background character that we'll see in a cantina or some sort of crowd scene. Now, one thing to note with this leak is there were no pictures of Finn, Rose, Carrie Russell's character, or Matt Smith's character. Now, we've seen Finn's costume already in the leaked sun photos. Um, Rose, we haven't seen at all. We do know that, Ke uh, that Kelly Marie Tran has been showing much longer hair uh, for the entire episode nine shoot. Carrie Russell, we don't know anything about her character beyond it being rumored that she's a bounty hunter per making Star Wars. And Matt Smith, who it seems like they're keeping his character under super, super tight lock and key security. So I think he's going to end up being something interesting. So moving on, we all know that shooting for episode nine wrapped last week. And on the day that shooting wrapped, Daisy's and Adam's makeup artist both posted that's a wrap type photos to social media. Now Adam's artist later deleted hers. It was a picture of a makeup table and had like a bruise palette and, and a bottle of fake blood, um, which is interesting because it kind of implies that Daisy and Adam were both shooting on that last day. But anyways, JJ confirmed the wrap himself by posting a photo of in costume Daisy, John, and Oscar hugging. Now, the, the photo is clearly from the Jordan shoot that took place last fall and not from the last day of shooting because that looks like a location shot. There's no green screens. It doesn't look like a set at Pinewood. And JD is probably misdirecting by posting this. If you follow the cast members and their significant others on Instagram, um, you probably recall that Oscar's wife, Elvira, was posting fairly frequently uh, throughout the shoot. Um, she was in Jordan with the cast. And according to her Instagram post, Oscar has been back in New York City for quite some time now. She's posted some photos of him in the last few weeks. So unless he's done a lot of flying back to London uh, to shoot at Pinewood, I think Oscar wrapped quite some time ago. Um, John Boyega was off doing charity work at a hospital the day before the last shoot, so he might have wrapped early unless it was just a day off for him. So to me, given that both Daisy's and Adam's makeup artists posted that day. To me, I think it's very plausible that Adam and Daisy both shot on that last day of filming. John, we're not so sure. Oscar, I don't think shot that day. So I think that's more evidence that that's an old photo that JJ posted. Now, one thing to note with this photo, if you haven't noticed, I'm sure you have, Ray's covering her scar here. Um, she's got a more elaborate hairdo here, and making Star Wars says that that's to make continuity easier with the old footage that they're going to use from Carrie for The Force Awakens. But the covering the scar is really interesting to me because you've got Kylo has his mask back on, and, and Ray seems to want to erase any memory or eliminate any questions about how she got that scar on her upper arm that happened in the throne room fight. Um, the picture itself, I think it's kind of hilarious when you think about it. Daisy and John are both looking elsewhere, and then you've got Oscar, who's actively embracing them both and crying. So that's got me wondering if this is sort of a goodbye of sorts for Oscar and Poe. Um, I don't recall him being seen in London much, if at all, after that Jordan shoot. So we'll see. Is, uh, does Poe make it through to the end of episode nine? I don't know. Um, we also know that, that Donald Gleason wrapped fairly early too, and he's been in Australia shooting the sequel to Peter Rabbit for, the, for a while now. Um, so it'd be interesting if both, knowing that JJ supposedly shoots roughly in order, to me it's, it's interesting if both, uh, both Poe and Hux were eliminated from the movie or fridged fairly, you know, fairly early, or at least certainly before the end of the movie. So this is just a quick update from us. 
It about wraps up this episode of Six Degrees of Kylo Ren. Thank you for listening. And if you have any questions or want to know what we're thinking about any of the speculation, let us know in the comments. Thank you. <laughs>